Now, the Justice and Correctional Services Minister, Ronald Lamola, has received four reports from the South African Law Reform Commission. The reports touch on the practice of ugutwala or the kidnap of young girls for marriage and sexual offences involving children. ENC's Barry Bateman joins us now and has been following the story. Barry, good afternoon. Now, South Africa has, see, has seen several recent amendments to laws related to, in particular, sexual exploitation of children and uh, the legislation such as the Cyber Crimes Act. But the Law Reform Commission has proposed legislation with greater reach. What is the recommendation? Yeah, good afternoon. Well, the main thrust of the proposals here is that uh, it would be a consolidation of all these laws related to uh, the sexual exploitation of children in particular. Um, the use of, for example, like uh, self-produced sexual material. Uh, we were hearing about the likes of sexting and the likes, which is, uh, you know, activity taken, uh, you're done by minors, but with other minors as well. But, you know, it would encompass that kind of activity and incorporating it into a single piece of legislation and this would be the Sexual Offences Act. At the moment uh, the laws are covered or the, 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 these kind of activities are criminalized but in various different pieces of legislation. You've got the Cyber Crimes Act for example which uh, was recently promulgated uh, which was actually very much welcomed by commentators in the reach and the extent to which it goes to deals with uh, to, you know, sexually, sexually um, and explicit material created by children or of children as well and uh, the criminalization thereof. Um, but what this act will also do, um, it will also uh, change, for example, the name of the, we, know, we will no longer use the term child pornography. You can imagine that term pornography is a uh, production of explicit material uh, made by consenting adults for consenting adults. Uh, it cannot, the name is, you know, it, it, it cannot reconcile with the term child. You do not get child pornography. So it is mm. sexual abuse material is the term we will use uh, for this kind of material. But just take a listen to Justice Jody Colopin discussing the rationale behind uh, proposing these changes to the law. Sexual offences, um, pornography and children. And it deals with the production of pornographic material uh, involving children, the dissemination of that material. And I think in a growing age of ease of technology, uh, one sees the, the impact that this could have on the broader society, but also on the, on the interests and the rights of children. And given that our Constitution carries within it the paramount principle that the best interests of the child uh, matter, and matter significantly so, it's an important area for us to consider in the context of our society. And the report uh, covers a variety of, of areas in how the law could best regulate that uh, with a view to protecting children, but also recognizing that children themselves may be involved in the production of this material uh, as children are naturally curious and, and how best to deal with that other than through the strict strictures of the criminal justice system, but in recognizing that um, we need to deal with children in a way that recognizes their youth, their vulnerability, uh, and the need not to stigmatize them permanently. Hmm. You know, Barry, I actually commend the decision to actually use correct terminology, call it what it is. It's child abuse material, not child pornography. As you say, it's important that we start calling things as they really are. But another thing I understand that the Commission also touched on matters related to custom and culture, which is often a very sensitive subject to deal with. These recommendations, I believe, related to Uktwala. Can you just expand on that one? Yeah, certainly can, and you're quite right. It is uh, often a sensitive matter in South Africa. We just look at the way our uh, local customs and cultures were treated in this country for uh, centuries. Um, you know, and now we're coming in an age of a constitutional democracy. There is a collision sometimes with those particular aspects. Um, so, what the Law Reform Commission and being very mindful of this particular practice, but what they're proposing here um, is a piece of legislation called, and I'm going to read it out here: the prohibition of 
forced marriage and regulation of related matters bill. And what this bill will essentially do, it states here quite clearly, it will create the following offenses. And this is uh, of forced marriage, child marriage. It further recommended that it should be a criminal offense for anyone to attempt, conspire with any other person to aid, abet, or induce, uh, or instigate, um, or procure another person to enter into a forced marriage or child marriage. But Jody Collipin speaking on this aspect, and he referred in the past, it might have been a benign practice, but it has been evolved and exploited uh, to be used in a manner that is prejudicial to, to women, but also to girls. But just take a listen to Justice Collipin speaking about this particular issue and why it was important for the reform, uh, Law Reform Commission to have a look at it. Practice of Upatwala can be um, described in the most simple terms as the forced taking of a bride. And the report uh, recognizes that some features of the practice may have had a benign origin, where a young man and a young woman fell in love and decided they wished to spend the rest of their lives together. But there were obstacles to that happening, either on the part of the family, either on the part of protracted and stalled Lobola negotiations. And so practice evolved, benign in its origins, where the young woman would be taken. Uh, not kidnapped, but she would be taken and brought to the family of the young man. And she would live there amongst the other women. And that would create a situation where the uh, family of the young woman would be almost compelled to come and seek her out and to enter then into bona fide negotiations for the marriage to be concluded. But over time, some features of that practice deteriorated to the extent that the notion of consent uh, in some instances simply lacked. Uh, people were taken without their consent. In some instances, young children were the subject of the distorted form of Ukutwala. And following its research and following a request to undertake the investigation, the Commission produced a report which uh, seeks to recognize on the one hand the benign and some of the positive features of the practice, but on the other hand to ensure that the practice was not used to force people into marriage or indeed was used to uh, prejudicially impact on the rights and the interests of, of children. Now, Barry, there were also two other reports. What did they relate to? Well, I'll touch on the first one here, or number three, as it is. Um, uh, this is the harmonization of existing laws providing for different prescription periods. And what this relates to is the time period with, within which a person may institute a claim, a financial claim, a legal claim against another person for whatever it might be. Now, there are various pieces of legislation in South Africa statutes book which uh, you know, have these prescription periods. In some law, uh, you'd need to institute a claim against someone within three years of the um, uh, you know, offense taking place. In other cases, it could be a little bit longer. What they propose here is uh, harmonizing, as it is, streamlining, bringing it in together uh, so that there would be a standard period um, for whatever offense that might, uh, you know, uh, be under question uh, and the, the time period within which a person can institute a claim against the individual. Uh, the other one relates to, uh, and this is very important, of course, uh, legal fees, including access to justice. Now, the concern, and we've seen it so often in South Africa, that access to justice is usually uh, the privilege of people who are well off. Uh, what they want to do here is to enable people who don't have the financial means to be able to access legal remedies. Uh, Justice Collipin pointing out that somebody who has a legal problem doesn't necessarily need a lawyer. Uh, there are other mechanisms that would enable a person to be able to access that uh, legal right uh, to be able to get redress through the legal system, but not necessarily relying on expensive uh, lawyers and uh, legal fees. All right. Barry, thank you very much for that report. That was Barry Bateman, our reporter. Now